What's up guys, welcome back to part 4 of the how to make a VR game series. As always, if you would like to support our channel so we can bring better and more content to you, please consider subscribing to the channel or supporting us on Patreon, where you can get access to our full source code. In the last episode we showed you how to grab objects and set the attach transform for each object properly. Also we gave you a little bonus by showing you how to shoot guns and hit targets with bullets. In this episode we will finally show you how to move around and turn your avatar without having to turn around or move physically in your room. We will also cover how to walk up and down stairs and jump off a platform for example. So let's jump right into Unity. So let's first clean up a little bit. You can see that I ordered all the game objects into parents. So for example in lights we have pros processing, directional light, global volume. In the environment we have everything that's in the environment, also the target. And in the interactables I only have the gun so far. And what I like to do is just put the XR interaction manager on the origin itself. So you can just add it here, the XR interaction manager, and then you can remove it from here. Next we start with the movement. First add a locomotion system and then add your XR origin. Then we add the continuous movement. Choose the action based one. You see many properties, but first assign the locomotion system. Here on move speed I recommend you to set it on about 3 since 1 is very slow. Enable strafe means basically moving left and right, so sideways. We leave it enabled. Use gravity you should know by now. It will tell the origin to react to gravity if we have a rigid body attached, which we don't have right now. Gravity application mode means if the origin is always affected by gravity with immediately or only if we move when we move with attempting to move. We set it to immediately for a more realistic feel. On the forward source we can assign the main camera, which means we will move in the direction we look at when pushing our stick forward. So let's grab our camera and assign it to the forward source. And then lastly, we can assign the input actions that allow us to trigger our movements for both hands. We will unchoose the right hand since we only want to move with the left hand. As you might remember from our first video, we already added all the default input actions to all movement types. If you don't like them and you would like to change them, just go to samples and go down to your input actions. Here maybe you can remember that we added all of them. If you don't like them, just remove them. And you can set other input actions on your rig. Like for example here. If you open the input action map, you see that for the move action right here, under left hand locomotion we have move, and here we added the 2D axis, which is basically our stick. I think that fits pretty nicely, so let's leave it like that and go ahead and create our environment. Here you can just add as many as you want. If you're happy with it, just save. So let's test this and see how our XR origin behaves. Alright, and as you can see, we can move with our left hand and we can still grab things with our right hand. But as you can see now, we can move through all the objects and we go through the stairs and cannot walk up. So let's look at that now. Well, as I said before, we are not affected by gravity or physics yet, but there is a special solution for that. It's called the character controller. Let's add that to our origin. The character controller has a slope limit. So in this case, if the angle is steeper than 45 degrees, we can't go up there. The step offset means if the step is higher than 0.3 units, we can't go up there either. So let's double check that quickly with our steps, and as we can see, our step is only 0.25, so which means we can go up there. 
Next, skin width means how deeply can two colliders penetrate each other. A large skin width will cause chitter, so I recommend you leave the value as it is. Generally, you should set the skin width to around 10% of the radius. In this case, 0.05. The radius is the radius of the capsule collider around our XR origin. We will reduce that slightly because a wide radius will mean that we collide with other objects from far away already and cannot get close enough to them so I like to reduce the radius a little bit. Let's set that to 0.3 and next we have the min move distance which tells the character to not move if the movement is below the indicated number to reduce chitter. It is recommended to leave this value at around 0 so we are basically always able to move. Next center describes where the center point of our capsule collider is. This is recommended to stay at 0, 0, 0. And lastly guys height describes the height of our capsule collider. We can also just leave this as it is. The last thing we need to do to properly move our character controller is to add the character controller driver. This will make sure the character controller follows us or better say our camera at all times and not just if we are moving in game with our controller. Lastly let's assign our continuous move provider and then test it. Alright guys as you can see we can't move into the cube anymore. Let's grab our gun and see if we can go up the stairs. Great! And then we can also jump off the platform. Cool, that works! But one more thing, as you can see, we cannot really turn around our head unless we are turning around physically in our room. Let's fix that now. By the way, if you want to check your character controller, you can just enable your gizmos by clicking right here and then you can see your capsule collider around your XR origin. We can now go to our XR origin again and we have two options here. We have the snap turn and we have the continuous turn. First, let's remove the left hand because on the left hand we are moving. We only want to turn on the right hand. Also here you can see that all input actions are already filled in for us because we set them in the first video. If you want to change them you can just click on here and choose another input action. We will leave it for now because the turning is also on the sticks now. I think turning and moving on the sticks is just the right thing for the XR Interaction Toolkit. All we have to do here is assign the locomotion system, so basically our XR origin. And the last thing I want to do is increase our speed of the continuous movement because I noticed we were still a little bit slow. And then we are going to disable the snap turn because we can only use one turn at a time. We're going to show you first the continuous turn. So let's test this. So if you did everything right, we can now move with the left hand and turn around with the right hand. As you may notice, you get a little bit of a headache or get cyber sick. This happens to many people, that's why most games use the snap turn. Let's now test the snap turn. We are just going to disable the continuous move provider and activate the snap turn provider and test this again. As you can see, we have a snap turn now. And that's already all guys. We looked at how to set up the movement of our XR origin and added a character controller. In the next video we will add the teleport and write our own code to switch between our direct interactor hand and our teleport hand. If you have any questions please consider joining our discord channel and thank you so much for staying all the way to the end. See you next time.